With the addition of Unreal Reader to Nuke X toolset, Nuke users can tap into the rendering power of Unreal and streamline their workflow without ever leaving their compositing application. In part 1 of this tutorial, we had a look at the way you can install the Nuke server plugin to Unreal and create a successful connection between the Nuke and the game engine, so Nuke can receive the data from Unreal. We covered how you can choose the relevant outputs to be rendered, how to generate a set of AOVs you might like to use inside of your projects. We also had a look at the way you can use some of those AOVs to create a 3D representation of your Unreal scene that can be used as a reference for positioning inside of Nuke. Once done, we brought the Unreal camera to Nuke as well. With our AOVs and camera in Nuke, we covered the CryptoMat workflow to create masks for our characters. Once all our required elements were in place, we covered a workflow where you can alter and add composited in element to your rendered Unreal scene. In part 2 of this tutorial, we will have a look at the updates to the Unreal Reader that streamline the mask generation using CryptoMat in Nuke 13.2. In part 1, we needed to create a mask for the monitor manually, since in Unreal the whole arcade machine was defined as an actor and in the previous implementation of the Unreal Reader there was no way to access additional ID information from Unreal via the CryptoMat. With the latest updates to the Unreal Reader, we can now not only extract the IDs for the actors, but also IDs for materials and folders, just to name a few. So to optimize the mask generation for our monitor, let's set the ID type in the advanced tab of the Unreal Reader to full or material and create a CryptoMat node for the mask extraction. This will allow us to target the monitor specifically. With our mask created, we can replace the whole 3D projection branch we used to manually generate the monitor mask with just a few nodes. To extract our foreground characters, we can also use the updated stencil layer workflow to get only the elements we need as additional layers. To use this workflow, let's change the Unreal Reader's mode to stencil layer and move over to the render tab where we can set the stencils to be generated as separate layers using an updated workflow similar to the familiar CryptoMart approach. The main advantage here is that you can get the full render and also specific separated elements from Unreal in one go. With our stencil layers for the troops selected, we can replace the troop foreground with our new layers. With the addition of Unreal Reader, the Unreal Engine can become a powerful extension of new built-in toolset. There you have it! Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and happy compositing!